Okay, this time, sorry guys, we've, uh, we might get some weird connection issues because the, um, there's a massive storm happening right now. In fact, what does the show? I'm going to show you guys. Is anyone watching? Come with me. Nikita, say hi. Hi. That is right now what's going on outside my window. Oops, getting wet. That's full on, isn't it? So yeah, there is, that usually is a view to the sea, but that ain't happening right now. We're in Thailand at the moment, guys. New Zealand in two weeks' time. Back to my hometown. Back to normality, hopefully. So, as I was saying, um, if you guys have any idea on how I can change the settings so it's not um, a mirror view, so, uh, or is a mirror view, whatever it means, so that it's not... I look like I'm playing left-hander right now, so I'll look at the Jimi Hendrix like, hopefully. So, so I'm going to muck around in that G as I was doing before, because I kind of like it. And I recommend you have a go at it. So I'm doing a G, normal G chord that I fully do there, but I'm not going to use my little finger or my first finger. I'm just going to crash drone. easily just using a bit of the TikTok technique it's kind of fun to use and the cool thing about those open strings is you can get a, a lot of speed happening so a lot of fast stuff because if you do like it let's say you do a pull off from the fifth string on the third string fifth fret to the third fret to zero you get this quite quick sounding just even just that with hammer on from a first finger hammer on pull off quickly and then it's to the zero you get like one two three four notes in a real quick succession so I'm not picking a lot there it's just just all downstrokes if I just do downstrokes and if you do both strings Take a bit of practice getting that going on, but it's pull off, pull off. It sounds super cool. And then you got that the zero of the G. <laughs> Some things falling down outside, I don't know what that was. And then I'm just getting a groove going now. I guess the funky part of that is the tick-tock going on, obviously, but there's dynamics happening here as well, I guess, so there's a... Hey! Is it r -to? I don't even know how to pronounce that, but you started with R-Y. <laughs> Good to see it. If you want me to show you something, just let me know, and I might be able to go over it right now, and hopefully you're able to hear that okay. There's a lot of water splashing around outside at the moment. Just in my kitchen in Thailand. <laughs> it's so much fun you can just have with one chord and jam on that one chord. So there's a lot of percussive stuff going on in my right arm. So I'm doing a lot of percussive stuff there. Lots going on. Using the palm a lot, so this is chugga 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 I might pull out some funky little upstrokes. I might do a bit of that sort of stuff as well. If you ever have a go at this sort of stuff, try and get your foot tapping at the same time. It's hard to see what I'm doing there, but try to get a foot tapping so you got this. Up 
too much, which I've got a real habit of. Anyone that plays in a band with me, they know I get a bit excited sometimes, and I can do that. So foot tapping helps on. So that kind of sounds cool. It um, reminds me a lot of Money for Nothing when you get that. So someone's having Winston Emmanuel Anunf. If that's right, F major 7 chord was that. So you're struggling with the F major 7 chord or the F major chord. You've just that little conversation disappeared there. So if you want to say that again. Oh, I'm out of tune. Might have to quickly tune up while we do this. So the F major 7 chord were you were having issues with? Or is it, are we talking about bar chords that you're having issues with? It'd be F major. Definitely see the F major. Oh, the bar. Do you want to have a look at the bar chord? So, if you've not seen my video on how to make amazing bar chords, I can't even remember the name of the title of that. Sorry about tuning at the same time, guys. It's for your benefit. It's the F bar chord. So let's have a look at F. F major, not 7th chord. Okay, cool. So we can tune properly, we'll do that. So the thing with bar chords is, most people try and do bar chords with their thumb in the same position that they do Ds, As and Es in. And we need to lower the thumb because when we do a bar chord, we need to spread our fingers as wide as we can to get that shape. So the thumb goes low on the guitar, okay? So it's so low that you might have to put it right at the back of the neck of the guitar like this. So if you do try and attempt to do a bar chord with the thumb on top, you're just going to have a crunched up little finger problem that's going to be terrible. And the other thing I'm recommending is that you start with the back three fingers of the F chord. So you put your second finger on, on the, second, on the third fret, second fret, third and fourth finger, get them in position already in the F position. So normally we'd start with the right with our first finger, wouldn't we? We'd, we'd go, uh, and then we'd put our other fingers on. But that's going to leave you scrunched up in a horrible position. We'll start with the back three fingers, then we'd make sure the thumb's low, the wrist is underneath the guitar, and the other, and the other finger's your elbow is going to be into your body. And we're going to put the first finger on, so the first thing is not going to be... Do you recommend using metronome? Okay, I'm probably finding it. Ah, that's a good. good question. I'll come back to that in a second. So with your first finger, make sure your first finger is not using this, the meaty part of the finger. It's using the corner of the finger. So we want our fingers on, th low thumb, use the corner of the finger and wrap it round. It's not a straight line. We wrap it round. We hook it. We grab it and we hook it. Really high position as well. It's something I forgot to mention. High position with all the fingers, and then the first finger is not close to this hand, it's way back. It's way back here, and when that's in place, we bring the elbow into the body, and you might even still, with that position being even 100% perfect, you might not initially have a perfect sound. You don't just persevere with it. So I'll go back through it. So F chord. If I went from a G chord, my thumb's up high, I'm going to put my back three fingers on. My thumb's going to go low. My wrist and my, my, my elbow is going to come into my body. So we end up with our fingers, if I show you flat on now, kind of lying down. It's not this way, it's kind of lying down, like on itself. And then the bar goes on last, and then you've got your F chord. And initially that's how you start. Eventually you just end up landing it. You just go from landing it at once. But it's, initially it's going to be one, two, three, and then low, um, and then you're going to do that. And that's going to happen for maybe the first 20 times you try it. And I just recommend just going to it, coming into it like a G or a D, and then getting back in, putting your fingers in, and just getting that position right. Eventually, that'll all land at the same time, like I say. But you've just got to persevere with that. Glenn, it's cold and wet in Nelson, is it? Oh, man. It's not actually cold here, though, so it's actually just wet. Really, really wet. Monsoon time here in Thailand. Looking forward to getting back to Nelson, seeing all you guys. So, Nelson, by the way, if you guys, the rest of the people in, in the world, Nelson is a little little place in, uh, in New Zealand that I come from. Uh, sup, Mark? Hey. Sup, you do? Hey. Ripper Day in Christchurch. Oh, good to see you, Tony. Nice. Uh, how to maintain rhythm along with fretting hand muting. Let's go back to the question we had earlier, which was, oh, the metronome. So metronomes is, a, is an old school way that we used to use to, to get in, to keep in time. So metronomes are a thing that, or you can get apps these days that go, make little noises and keep your timing uh, really cool. The problem with them is they're a bit boring. So what I recommend is playing along, you can do a metronome, but I recommend playing along to um, either another, a track that exists, 
or you could do, um, you could do, sorry, I just see conversations coming up, I'm distracted. I'll, I'll come back to that one as well. Um, or you could do playing with a drum beat. I like playing with a drum beat or downloading a drum beat or different drum beats and then you can put the setting on, on different times and playing to the drum beat because that's a bit more real. It's a bit more real. Make a video on hammering. We can do some stuff on hammering today if you want. So, hope you guys all enjoying this free lesson that's happening right around the world. This is my uh, very first time doing this guys, so thanks for coming and joining in and go easy on me because this is a bit new. Hey, greetings from Germany. Please keep on going. Oh, cool, yeah, I'm def definitely going to be keeping on going. My aim is to make the channel as awesome as possible because I want it to be the top channel that everyone goes to for all the, for your ideas on guitar. Mm. There's so many teachers out there, isn't there, guys? But there's so many things that I think are missing in, as far as guitar teaching world goes. So hopefully I'm going to fill those gaps in for you. And between all of us guitar teachers out there online, we can make it an amazing experience so you don't have to try so hard and make it a fun and rewarding experience. So um, what was the other question I had there? I'm just going, uh, how long have I been playing guitar? Well, I'm 45. Yesterday I was, had my birthday, 45. And I've been playing since I was 15. Probably picked the guitar up when I was 13. And then I knew three chords. I, I did D. I did, that was my G. I was just playing the bottom strings and that was, and then that was my A. I didn't know what the name of those things were because my dad showed me and he didn't know what they were called either. He just, and out of those, I learned how to play La Bamba. That's how I started and I probably didn't have as good TikTok as that and I didn't use a pick either. It was just my dad's classical guitar and I did something like that and I just learned how to do that as fast as I could because that was the coolest song out at the time. And it was in the wrong key, but hey, it sounded like La Bamba, so I did it. Um, but what else have we got there? What were the other questions there, guys? Keep firing those questions up, and uh, I'll try and cover as much as I can. Metronome thing we covered, hopefully covered. What else do we got there? What kind of guitar am I using currently? It sounds awesome. Hey, thanks for that. Anthony Music. You look very familiar, Anthony Music. The, um, we've got a Cole Clark right here. This is a Cole Clark. This is this probably the second acoustic guitar that I've seriously bought. The first one was my Takamine, which you might have seen in some early videos. You know, I used a Maton, but that wasn't actually mine, but I used that for the videos. And I just love the Australian-made guitars. Um, they've just got a certain sound about them that sounds amazing. And plugged in, which because I do a lot of gigs, the, the percussive element is amazing. It's just like, play a bit of your favourite song. Ooh, we could probably do a bit of that. Um, but yeah, so this is a Cole Clark. I'm not endorsed by anyone at the moment. I'm only little at the moment, but if you do know of anyone that wants to endorse me, let, let them know that I am very keen to do that sort of thing. But, um, but yeah, I love Cole Clark guitars. They just sound amazing. Plugged in, I don't, I don't think there's anything that can beat it. They've got little microphones and stuff in it. Yeah, I, I am right-handed, guys. I'm just so gifted that I decided to play left-handed today because I had a left-handed guitar here. That's actually not true. It's just the mirror the thing on the, on, the, uh, on the camera for some reason. This guitar costs a fortune. This one here is an incredibly expensive guitar. It is, but I justified the expense by um, doing gigs and stuff like that, obviously. So, uh, what's my dream guitar? Um, I'm, you know what, I'm actually not a geek on guitars. I actually don't care. Uh, if a guitar feels good, it feels good. Um, I play a Fender Strat, mostly. But I actually don't care. I, I can pick up a, a, a cheap guitar and just play it. If it feels good, I'll play it and enjoy it. it I'm not really a connoisseur, so I'm, I know it's shock horror. I'm supposed to be a guitarist, but not a guitar guy. And I'm not, really not a gear, a gear geek. I have people that help me, like friends of mine that are really good. I go to them when I need to buy something so that they can, they can help me. But um, I know what good tone is. And I know what I like. I guess that's the only thing, really. I mean, I don't sit there looking at guitars all day. I don't, um, I don't watch lots of videos on guitar um, generally. But I love the sound that it makes, and I love the way it, I guess when I've got it, how I like to make it sound. Um, and make some embellishing guitar techniques and Picasso guitar techniques so that I can use it at my gig, cafe, and church. Ah, so percussive techniques. Well, the best thing. I'm not one of those dudes that does all the, all the, all that sort of flickety flickety stuff. To, to be honest, I find it really boring because once you start seeing one person that does it and everyone seems to do it, they've got all these. They're so busy doing what they're doing, and it's so technically brilliant and amazing. 
I just find it detracts from the actual music and melody and song and simple stuff. So I just do it quite simply all with my pick and with my right hand. It's pretty much what I'm doing when I'm doing the percussive stuff. Like if I do that G chord, it's a nice one, an easy one to practice with because I'm playing all the strings. What I'll do is I'll change my angle. It's a weird question, do girls fall for guitar? I don't know if girls fall for guitar. They definitely fall for guitar players, that's for sure. Not this guitar player. But is that right, Nikita? She's watching in the background there. So I'm just going to do a funky rhythm. Um, and I'm just going to G chord. You see that G's going on? Nothing flashy going on. Here's my right hand. My right hand, I'm using my right hand to thud the guitar and sit on the guitar. By the way, a lot of people ask this question too, where do I strum the guitar? You don't have to strum right on the top of the sound hole, right here. That's not, that's, it seems like that would make sense, but you don't need to. You can actually strum at the back, and that's where most people do strum. And that's actually the best spot, so you can get all sorts of percussive sounds by using palm muting, just in the right spot of the strings right here. I know it looks left-handed, guys, if you just joined us, so don't start complaining about the left-handedness. It's just the mirroring of my <laughs> cheap old little camera that I'm using right now. This is very impromptu, so how to practice smoother chord transitions. Pressing technique. Go to the pressing technique video and you'll figure out how to do that. That'll help you a lot. So you'll see I'm doing lots of rhythm going there. If I took my palm off, there's, there's no percussiveness going on there. But I am tick-tocking, okay? The tick-tock is continuous. And then you, I'd start by going, just adding that, that helps, that's where you're starting. Now what's happening is there I'm going on, I'm going sort of, I'm going on and for, for the slap and then off again, on, on, so it's sort of like a backwards feel, that's my snare drum. Now the other thing I'm doing is I'm playing with the G chord, I'm playing the top strings, for the, for the beginning of the bar, I'm playing the top of the string, so which is my bass note, and then I'm playing the rest for the rest of the song, or the rest of the bits, and then if I want to play a little riff, I can throw that in there, so that's kind of it, that's my percussiveness in a, in a nutshell. There's a lot to learn with percussiveness, so what you want to do is start with one thing, which might just be the backbeat, like... Favourite music or artist or someone I look up to? So I grew up listening to The Shadows initially and then I heard um, lots of other cool stuff but Mark Knopfler, he was probably my biggest influence because Dire Straits, that Money For Nothing album was just huge at the time and he was just, the tone he had was amazing and I'd sit there, before I was even a guitar player, I'd just listen to his guitar playing over and over. Um, and so that would be one of my biggest influences, would be Mark Knopfler. After that would be Gary Moore, and all this would be electric guitar, by the way. I wasn't really an acoustic guitar fan in those days. And then it was, um, I was in my teens, so it was metal and stuff like that. Juliet, you want to hear some Romeo and Juliet? Normally tuned differently, I think that's what you want. But this is the version I would do if I did a, a capo on, I'd play it in D shapes. So I'd end up with. Uh, I love this song. By the way, this is my favourite song. The struck Romeo sings the street a serenade, laying everybody low with a love song that he made. Finds a convenient streetlight, steps out of the shade, says something like, You and me, babe, how about it? Juliet. Dice was loaded from the start, and I'm bare. And you exploded in my heart, and I forget, I forget. You know the movie song. When you gonna realize it was just that the time was wrong, Juliet? More of a finger star song, that one, isn't it? Stampy says hi. G'day, Stampy. How are you? Should be working, shouldn't you, Stampy? This time of night. 
So, um, so yeah, that's a bit of melody and stuff going on at the same time, but uh, and it's not the obviously the original tuning of that song because I'd have to sit here for an hour and a half getting the tuning right. But uh, what are your thoughts on flamenco? I love flamenco. I love the sound of it, but I can't do it. I can't do it. It's just one of those things where you do. Um, you, you, there's a few styles out there: classical, jazz, and even flamenco would probably be in that category where you really need to knuckle down and be disciplined on that one style. Um, I like to be more of a contemporary guitar player, so I like to play. Uh, I don't have a strict way of holding the guitar like you do in flamenco or classical. Um, and with jazz, it's very confined. But for me, it's confined to just jazzy sounding stuff. Not that I've got anything against those things, but me as a guitarist, I don't like doing those sort of styles too much. I like to be a little bit more of an all-rounder. What was that? That's a little conversation pop up. I'm a little bit dyslexic, so when things pop up like that, I'm like, what? What, it? what was that? So, um, so yeah, I'm not too just too strict on that sort of stuff. Let me play a Guns N' Roses song on the acoustic, Patience maybe. I'll play a little bit of it. The cool thing about that song is, um, um, it's in the key of C, and it's nice strumming. It's just all about a nice guitar tone, isn't it? Sort of style of the song. I won't go too much into the song because it's Axel, and I won't be able to sing like that for that much longer than just what I gave you. But um, but it's all about writing technique, isn't it? Oh, thank you, thank you, Melda. Great example of a song with awesomeizing. You know, if you've been watching my videos on awesomeizing, just little fingers on, little fingers off while you're strumming a chord. You can do what you want, guys. You're not limited to just playing a C when it says play C or a D when it says D. Um, the other thing I'd recommend is just because it's a way an artist plays it a certain way doesn't mean you have to do it that way. I mean, if you're starting out, you might want to do that sort of thing and get exactly what you heard on the album, and then have your own ideas later on. But I reckon just go for it and make your own version of stuff. If you like it better, then there's nothing wrong with that. There's no wrong or right here. Good choice though, I like that song. Shifting chords for beginners. So yeah, shifting chords for beginners, I think what you need to do is the pressing technique. So if you've got two chords you're having trouble with, let's say it's like B minor and a G, so that's two really cool hard chords to change to, then I would literally just do pressing technique, which is by the way, just pushing the chord down and going, uh, thinking to yourself B minor, and then going G. G, okay? Now, if you've got one chord you're having an issue with, that's still applicable, but don't just do one chord for the pressing technique. Don't just go, like if it's a C for example, don't just go C, or that, or that version of C, and then C. I want you to go C, then another chord. Maybe you know A really well, so you might go C, A, C, A. And that applies to tricky chords, like you might be doing a G major 7th to a um, diminished chord of some sort, or a flat 5 chord or something like that then I'd just literally go over those two chords over and over, just one at a time, just one, and maybe just start with pressing, 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 and then move on to one strum, do one strum of each chord, and the sound of the chord is not the most crucial thing, which is crazy if you're in a musical instrument of any other type. The sound is really not that critical at the beginning. Get the feeling of the chord, the sound will just fix itself as you get better. As you get better at hitting those chords, the sound will just start to get better because you can't help but get it better. That's what's going to happen. But don't physically go, oh, hang on, oh, no, oh, no, 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 you end up going nowhere. You know how to play any bass or any other instrument? Yep, I play bass, I've played in a few bands, I've played bass guitar. I'm an average bass player that happens to wing it from my guitar playing. Um, and I play, I'm learning mandolin at the moment, so I'm enjoying that. Uh, other musicians in the church, oh, that's a good question. So, um, awesomeizing, you were just asking me about just there. And what else do I do? I play a little bit of piano, but very badly, just enough for songwriting. I would never be able to play in a band. Um, I play drums because I was in the military, I was in the army for nine years, and I was in the army band for eight of those nine years. So, um, I, I marched, and I played the marching drums pretty much, like snare drum, side drum, and learned how to do my rudiments. So a lot of my rhythm and percussiveness, I guess, comes from that sort of stuff as well. The fact that it's tick 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 and paradiddles and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I've done a lot of that stuff too. And I can, you can put that on a drum kit really easy as well. So yeah, those are pretty much the only instruments I play. 
I think. Um, embellishments for playing by yourself. Well, that's a really good question. You need to check out my awesomizing of chords. So awesomizing will get you through. Don't worry about that. So like I say, if you've got a G chord, you've got these, you've got these things that you can play within a G chord. So I'm just making stuff up. So instead of just doing one bar of, or two bars of G, which sounds fine, but a little melody within there so it's going to be a bit more interesting in there. So as long as your TikTok's really, really good, you should be really fine with that sort of thing. Embellishments will come. To start with one thing for each one. Uh, good to see you. Good to see you, Mark. There's a legendary guitarist just messaging me there who's Far better than me and should be doing your own videos there, Mr. Francisco. Get it, get, you should get, go live now, Mark, so then we'll watch you. So it's cool to see some of you guys out there watching this sort of stuff. I won't go too much longer, we'll go another five minutes. I um, might have to get off and get some food and stuff, and I'm probably boring you right now. Any other questions out there, just let me know. We well, yeah, totally, you should totally do that. Everyone go, everyone here, just go check out Mark Francisco, he's an amazing guitarist. Go just look him up, he's amazing. How many guitars do I currently own? Not that many, believe it or not. Um, I, although, when I add them up, it'll probably sound like a lot. I have uh, a Fender Strat, um, a white Fender Strat, which is gorgeous. Um, what's my dream axe? I just love Fenders. I just love Fender Strats. Um, I don't know if there's a dream guitar that I like. I just like a nice tone on a Fender Strat, especially up on the bridge, uh, bridge? no, up on the neck position pickup. Nice bluesy, crunchy tone, and I can just play all day long. Um, what else have I got? I've got random little guitars, but this basically is my daddy for, for my acoustic stuff. My Strat is my daddy as well. I've got an Ibanez, sort of like a Les Paul sounding guitar, just for that sort of stuff. I've got a fretless bass, which I enjoy, and a bass guitar. And I've got a, well that's actually not my mandolin, the one that the kid has got, so I don't really have a lot. I, i got a banjo, we've got a banjo in the house as well, so we've got our country going. Oh, I just missed that little pop-up question there, or something popped up there. But yeah, so I don't have a lot of guitars, I'm not a guitar geek when it comes to actual gear. Thoughts on shredding? Uh, I used to love it, I used to absolutely love it. Obviously it's not such a big deal now because everyone's doing it. You go on Instagram and you've got a million usually um, attractive young ladies for some reason, doing, doing like crazy little, you know, metal shredding stuff, which is more of a technical exercise these days, and man, anyone can do it. I mean, there's four-year-old kids that are doing it, and they're way better than I ever was. Um, but I, do, I did love the sound of it when I was a teenager, I guess with all the hormones changing and stuff, and it made a big deal at the time. And I used to think I'd be a warrior guitar player up there doing some sort of... Fiddly, fiddly stuff, which I can't even do. You can hear that. It sounds terrible. But, uh, yeah, I, if you're into it, then do it. Just get into it. It's, it's a great feeling playing fast. It does feel amazing when you can pull off a really cool fast lick. But most people don't even know what's going on. Only the guitar players in the audience will enjoy it. And, you know, it's three people. So, uh, I am into it. Nice. Well, you should be into it. It sounds... It's, it's awesome. It's awesome that you're into it. Just love it. If that's the case, just go for it. I locked my wits up in, in my room and just tried to get some Ingve Malmsteen licks down. And, uh, I did love the sound of it. I did love the sound of it. But for some reason, it was like playing with matchbox toys, like the little cars when I was a kid. I used to think I'd never get bored of this. I'd be like, no, I'm never going to stop doing this. When I'm a nerd, I'm going to keep playing with cars. Um, and then I was just one day, I went to go and play with my little matchbox toys and it wasn't any fun anymore. So that was probably the same with that sort of stuff. Any top tip for playing chords like B major to cover D, G, B string? D, G, B string. D, D, G, B string. Like playing G to cover. You might have to ask that question again because it's just disappeared, that question. By the way, is a metronome like really necessary? No, I don't think so. I think necessarily... It's only necessary if you're practicing maybe a little bit of shredding, that could be really cool to practice with a metronome. So if you had like tick, 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 and you go. And you wanted to get like a little riff that's like, or a little light faster and faster and you wanted to measure it, then maybe a metronome would be good then. But as far as keeping in time, I don't think it really helps. I really don't. 
Uh, I think you'd be better off playing off with a yeah, you're probably better off playing with like a, a drum beat or the actual track, um, unless you are trying to get something faster. Like you're working on a riff and you haven't quite got it up to speed, then maybe that would be the only time I'd actually get a metronome because you can just you can ju adjust it slightly to get better and better. Any other questions, guys? Sorry, I saw that I saw a big question there and I missed it. Scales intermediaries should learn scales. Scales, I think you should definitely learn scales. But don't get too carried away with them. Get get really musical with one scale. Yeah, really one one scale shape and get really good at it. I really believe that. And then add another scale to it and then your repertoire will grow that way. Pull-off technique. I missed the last bit of that, but the pull-off technique. So when you're doing a pull-off, the idea of a pull-off is to you're gonna have strength and say if I'm pulling off from here the seventh fret to the fifth fret. Your third finger is the one doing all the work, really, but your first finger has to be grounded. So when you're pulling off, your third finger, the flick is really uncomfortable. When you first learn pull off, it's horrible. All the muscles are sore, and you get the actual the, the fingers wearing out on the on the fretboard. It is not a nice feeling, but it's a really cool technique to have. Pull off to that first finger. It's really making sure the first finger is grounded, and the third finger, or in this case, third finger, is really is flicking as hard as it can. When you first start off, you might not get much volume. You might get that sort of thing. But you really want the pull-off to be this way. It flicks. It, like a bow and arrow, you're, you're pinging. You want to ping that string. Okay, so you need to... You can't just lift the finger off. A lot of people pull off, they just lift the finger straight, like directly up off the guitar. You want the pull-off to go down. And if, but make sure you pull off from every finger. Can you make some short, really fast, good sounding lick on an acoustic and tell us the notes so that I can learn it? <laughs> oh, I don't know about that. I'll be there all day trying to figure out what my what your frets and stuff are, but uh, just go and find any cool tab off the net or just go and find any other cool video online which has got a, just one little riff. Maybe in a video. Yeah, we could maybe do that in a video. I'm not really much of a shredder, but um, there's probably some cool riffs I can do. I, I used to like doing this stuff with an open string. It'll be kind of fun. <laughs> sort of stuff's kind of fun because you can just you just focus on one string being fast down up picking so we can just play any other note really and it sounds kind of cool that sort of stuff's kind of fun Jesus Christ I look very similar at the moment but no I'm not but thanks thanks Mark <laughs> Yeah, so that stuff can sound kind of cool, but I don't. I guess you guys never see me do that sort of stuff, do you? Because I'm always teaching you guys like how to play C and D and G minor. But, uh, but yeah, it's kind of fun to do that sort of stuff. Um, any other questions before we finish up, guys? By the way, thank you all for joining. I don't know uh, how fun or rewarding this has been for you guys to do this, but very my first time doing this live stream thing, so uh, hopefully it's worthwhile. Just. Just let me know if it's not, and if it's, I'm trying to figure out this mirroring thing so I don't look left-handed all the time. And uh, we'll get some other cool stuff going. But we're going to do this again for sure, just for my own benefit, because I get to talk to you guys. But uh, if there's no more questions, well, I'm out of here. And it's been really cool to do this. Look forward to seeing you. Hey, look, thanks for camp thanks for asking all the questions, Melvin. It's been awesome. Oh, nice. Yes, we should do this for every once in a while for sure. See you soon, bro. Ah, the stamp. This Stampy, by the way, that's Stampy, my bass guitar player from the band I play in back in New Zealand. So that's pretty cool. You're not feeling too well today, Stamps. Sorry about that. Cheers, it's mate. No worries, Tony. All right, guys, signing off. We'll see you again soon. Keep a check out for the next lessons. If you want to keep in touch with my own stuff, go to Instagram, and um, there's a lot of my personal stuff. And more crazy to life, you can get in touch with that way. But uh, hey, no worries, Anthony. Anthony Music. Now, I'm pretty sure that is the amazing vocalist from Christchurch, Anthony, but I can't quite see your little emoji there. Glenn Howarth, great fun, thanks. Sure, hey, cheers, guys. We'll catch you later, eh? I'm going to try and figure out how to get out of this.